Welcome back everyone. In this segment we're going to look at Prezi presentations and we're going to build a bit off of the work we've been doing with our PowerPoints and SlideShare presentation. I do this partly because I want to encourage you to always make things as easy as possible on yourself so recycle when you can, especially for a training exercise like this one. My goal here is just to get you comfortable with the program so you can make things as fancy as you'd like after we nail down the basics. I also want to focus on shortcuts since it's usually easier to edit something than to start from scratch. Now let's start by taking a look at what a Prezi presentation looks like. The main thing that I want to point out with this, with Prezi presentations or similar software programs like Ahead.com, any of them, is that they're not really linear. We aren't moving from one slide to the next and we're able to take in a view of everything and then kind of zoom in on the pieces of information that we want to show in a little bit more detail. So we can kind of go in and show things quite up front or we can even hide bits of information by making something like this image so small that you wouldn't necessarily see it and then you're allowed to kind of bring it forward when you're ready. So all of this can be kind of an engaging way to look at information and it also can kind of change the way you tell a story or perhaps present an idea. It's also easy to create what we call subgroupings of ideas or chains of thought or any other bits of information and you can build those right inside your presentation. Another great thing about Prezi is that it's a good collaboration tool. It's easy to share because you simply create an account and then you're able to save all of your work online. So if you're working on this at home and you have internet in your classroom, you can simply walk in, log in, and pull your presentation right up. Likewise, for students who are all working on this together, as long as they have internet access, they're able to see each other's work and add and contribute to it. And then, of course, you can download it as well uh, so that you have it straight on your desktop if you do not have internet access, and then that way you can still pull up your product and work from there. But in order to do anything, you're going to want to go ahead and register at Prezi.com. So that's simply P-R-E-Z-I dot com. And it'll take you to this, which is their home page. And of course, it tells you all kinds of great information on their home page about how wonderful their product is. But we're going to kind of pass over that for now and simply go to this button here, which is Sign Up Now. So right away, you'll see that you have a couple different options. And for our training exercise, we're simply going to work off the free public option. I think that will work for the, the largest number of people. And then you can see that you can upgrade to uh, Prezi licenses that will let you do a lot more, store a lot more, uh, create your own logo, these types of things set up for private presentations. Also too, I do want to point out in this tiny little print down here are student and teacher licenses. So of course I encourage you to check this out. Now, in order to create an educator account, you will need what Prezi refers to as a certified educational email address. And what that typically means is you need something that ends in that .edu. Now, of course, I realize, and I think Prezi realizes, that you know, there are many schools around the world that do not have these types of accounts. So you can go to services, for example, like Gaggle, G-A-G-G-L-E.net, and they offer low-cost education email accounts that Prezi will accept. Uh, so you can, you know, simply click on Try Now, enter in your school email address here, and then click Continue, and they will reach out to you and help you set up this account. But as I mentioned before, the free account does quite a bit. I also want to point out this little button down here, Prezi for Education. This page has all kinds of great resources for teachers because Prezi, of course, cares about you, as they should, because teachers make up a, a large number of their consumers. So they offer all kinds of great articles, tips, a lot of teachers don't just read this or kind of consume information that, th that they put out, but they also contribute to it. So it's a great place to ask questions, get help, and also to get ideas, not just for preparing your own talks, but also ideas for projects that you can use so your students can create Prezi's of their own. So of course it's a really good resource and I hope that you will check this out. 
In the meantime, we're going to go ahead and head back over to Prezi.com, their home page, so that we can go ahead and sign up for a free account. And I'm going to ask that everyone do this, even if you're planning on signing up for an educator license, simply because that will take a little bit of time. So uh, please go ahead and, and come to the public free account here and click on sign up. Simply enter in your first, last name, email, you're going to create your password and re-enter it, and then don't forget to agree to the terms of use, and then simply click sign up, and it will take us over to this page. Not surprisingly, we have zero Prezi's, which is going to show us here. So let's go ahead and click on plus new Prezi. And we want to go ahead and create a title for it. So in this particular case, we can just do test. And then create a new Prezi. Now this is one of the things I like best about this program is that we have templates that we can work from. So we have the choice of creating something from scratch, which I don't recommend at this point. I think it's far better to go ahead and take a look at some of the, the basic templates that they have to work with. If you already have a presentation in mind, and I hope you do, uh, then I'm also hoping that one of these images will kind of jump out at you. Uh, whether it's something like balance or this image of the city, there's a lot of different things here that, that should kind of resonate with something that you're working on. Uh, the Roots to Results, I know it's quite popular with a lot of teachers. Uh, some people like the Zoom programs, uh, you know, the OWL Wisdom, which is kind of nice because you simply have this kind of one, two, three format, which is also quite nice. You also see that some of these here list 3D as an option, which means that they have a little bit more animation with some of their pieces if, you, if you'd like. I'm going to go ahead and click on this one here, Make Progress. And what I kind of like about this is that it already has this one, two, three option in there. And since I've kind of been working on this theme, I hope you have noticed it up to this point of, you know, upgrading your PowerPoints or powering up your PowerPoints is as easy as one, two, three. So I'm going to keep to that theme and pick Make Progress for this purpose. But of course, please feel free to use any of these that you like. If you are able to master uh, the basic steps in this, then you should be able to work with any of them. So I've selected that and then I'm going to click on Choose here. And this opens up my canvas, as they would say in this particular case. We say canvas, it's really a Prezi term. It's where we're going to create our presentation. It's where we're going to add in images, words, play with colors and themes, and then create a path for our storyline. And so here's when I'm going to go ahead and show you our first little quick tip. And that is right here where it says PowerPoint. One of the easiest ways to kind of get the ball rolling with something like this is to take a PowerPoint that you already have and import it. And all you have to do is simply click on this here and then open up the folder that you want, select your PowerPoint presentation, and it will import it right into your canvas. So it takes just a second. I'm using the Power Up PowerPoint presentation that we've been working with so far. And so you can see it comes in like this. And you actually have the choice of inserting all or just inserting some of it. So I'm going to leave some of these for now and just kind of keep them there where I need it. I'm not going to insert all of them, but if I wanted to insert all of them, I would simply click on this button here. But I'm going to go ahead and kind of enter in information manually so you can go ahead and get an idea of how to do that. And as you can see, anything that we kind of click on it'll highlight so that we can kind of change it out. And so we'll start with our title. So I'm going to go ahead and click to add text. And one thing I want to point out are, are these little tools right here. So we like that it's the title. We want this to be big. We want this to be visible so we can use that. But if for some reason I wanted to shrink it, I could do subtitle or body and it'll automatically adjust the size and even the color of the text. And so this will let me increase the size. So say for example, I like the blue subtitle text, but I want it to be a little bit bigger. I can click on this and increase the size, or I can decrease the size simply by using this. And then, of course, I still have the option to change the color if I prefer. So there's a couple things that we can do. I can also add in bulleted points, 
which you wouldn't do, of course, with a title, but perhaps with a part of the body of your presentation. And then, of course, whether we want to end in or not, whether we want to have uh, our, you know, our text move to the left or if we want to have it centered. So there's a lot of ways that you can kind of adjust this. So for us, we're simply going to go ahead and just enter in Power Up. And then we're going to click down here to finish your PowerPoints. And as we see, I made a little bit of a, a hiccup there. So in order to edit it, what we're seeing here is a zebra come up. And so I want to click on this little pencil right here because this is going to let me correct my mistake. I can simply go back in and do power points with everything lowercase. And then click outside of the box in order to finish it. I do want to take a quick second to go back to the zebra. See, whenever we click on something again after we've already worked with it, this little round item will come back up. And it lets you do a couple of things. Uh, one, you can increase the size of something or decrease the size. You can edit the text as we've seen before by clicking on this. It opens back up our options so that we can retype something in, add something, delete something. And each time we click outside the box, we kind of move out of that and if we click on it again the zebra will reappear. We also have this which will let us kind of move through the canvas. If we want to bring that up a little bit closer we can do that as well. This will let us tilt and that's another feature with some of these is particularly where you have these circle icons that can kind of be useful. And so these are all kind of good things that we want to uh, get familiar with. Some of the basics that come with this particular program. So we have our title set up in there that we're going to go ahead and work with from there. And then next I want to go ahead and kind of focus on our three points. And this is where I think we can start to have a bit of fun. So if you'll recall, my three main points were just say no was the first one, and then a picture says a thousand words for number two, and then number three was keep it short. So we're going to play off these themes and expand them a little bit. So to get started, I'm just going to click down here. And when I click on this, I'm going to go back to my edit, and it's going to zoom in for me. So we see that they already have some space there where I can add a little bit of information. So simply by clicking on this section, I'm going to go ahead and type in just say no. Now I have the choice of adding in some extra text, which I'm going to go ahead and do just to kind of use as an example. So if you recall from my little script, which I know you've heard multiple times now, I'm going to go ahead and type in abandon templates. But now I want to pull outside of my circle a little bit. And so in order to do that, I can click back outside of here. And then I can go up here to add frames. So when I click on that, I'm going to go for another circle. So I'm going to draw a circle frame and I'm just going to hold down my little mouse button and drag this until it's done. And one of the things I hope you'll notice is that it automatically added it into a path over here and we want to be really careful with that. By looking at these numbers we'll con we can see that and this is the order in which our information is going to show up. So we don't want there to be a gap. I'm trying to put these close by to this point so that it will go from here to here. So in order to manage that, I want to go ahead and click on this one, hold down my mouse key, and drag it up so that it becomes number three on the list. Also, to make sure that we kind of stay on point, I'm going to go up here and add a shape. I'm going to pick an arrow. And by doing that, it'll let me pick from start to finish. So I, st I click on my start point, and then I drag my finger over or my mouse over to where I want it to end. Okay, and then I can even adjust it, tweak it a little more, have it curve some in the middle. And then if I want, I can pull this back a little bit, give it a little more space, make it look the way I want to look. Once I have my circle, I can go ahead and click on the inside of it and begin editing it. So I click on the, the pencil this time and it's not going to open up any text for me because we don't have a text box yet. But don't worry, you simply just get in here, click on it again, and then this time it's going to allow me to enter in the text anywhere in the circle where I would like it to appear. So the next line of my script is it's bold.
And then I can also add, and it makes text and images pop. So if I want to, I can go ahead, add another frame. This time I can do a bracket. And again, click with my mouse, put this piece in, add another shape. I can simply do a line this time, start to finish. So my mouse will dictate where it begins and where it ends. Okay, click on the box once more. We go to our pencil piece. Once we zoom inside, I'm going to click and now I've got my text box. Okay, and so now I'm going to say it makes text and images pop. I'm going to click outside of this and then click back in to get my zebra because I want to scooch this over a little bit. Maybe kind of center it in here. And then again, I'm going to go ahead and click on my little pencil to edit. And I'd like for this text to be centered in here. So I can do that as well. Now when you're working on these, sometimes you'll find that you kind of ended up in a hole a little bit where you're so deep inside your Prezi that you kind of lost yourself. So if you drag your mouse over to the right and kind of let it hover, you'll see these images come back, which lets you zoom in, zoom out, or simply go home and it'll pull you back in so you kind of have that bird's eye view of your piece again. Now while we're here I do want to go back over to our edit path and kind of give a reminder here that this last piece that we added in we do want to go ahead and move up to position 4 because what we're wanting is this kind of logical flow of our script and in order to keep that on track those three sentences together to come one after another I want to go ahead and move that up. Now, for the second circle, I'm actually going to get rid of the text. So if I, if I click on it, I can simply just hit the space bar and, and everything will disappear. Same thing here as well. I can simply click the space bar and then I lose that little space where they have edit text so nothing will show up in my final product. And what I'd like to do here is actually add an image. So instead of saying a picture says a thousand words, I actually want to use a picture in this case. So by going up to images, we can pull from Google Images or we can simply pull from our own file. So I'm going to go back in. I have an image already pre-selected. So when I click on this, it will download the image. And I just picked something that I thought was kind of fun or cute or catchy. Of course, you can use anything that you want to for this particular thing. And then I can simply drag it over. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. There we go. I'm a little happier with that. Okay, perfect. And now I want to go back home again. Not that much home. Let's zoom in. There we go. And then finish it out with point three. I'm going to do something a little different. Okay, so I click on here, add my text, which in this case is keep it short. And then like we did in step two, I'm going to hit the space bar and then click outside the box to simply get rid of that piece because I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to add in frames, but I'm going to pull from this layout section. And you've got a couple different ones that you can play with, but I'm going to go ahead and take cycle, uh, cycle number two in fact. So I, I simply click on that just like we did with our templates and then I'm going to select choose. And then what's nice is if you'll notice, and I'm going to go ahead and enlarge this a little bit, it automatically adjusts the number. So it puts it perfectly in my path so I know where to go with this. So I see that when my presentation shows up it'll show the big circle first and then it'll narrow in on these three pieces as seven and then 8, 9, and 10. So let's go ahead and use you know, some simple text that we're going to put in here. So when I click it tightens up for me so it's easier to see. So I can say don't use whoops, bulleted points. And then I can click over here and say when a few strong oops, words and then simply use the drag button to pull myself down to here 
will pack a bigger punch. I'm sure you guys have memorized this whole thing by now. <laughs> okay, and that takes care of number three. So this is pretty good. We have our whole path. It's already in order. It's set up the way we like it. And so this is looking pretty good. So let's go ahead, go back home again. Okay, so it did take us all the way back home again. So if it does do that, you can simply zoom in until it's actually visible. And then there's just one last thing that I want to add to this, and it'll kind of cover all the basic elements that will help you get started in creating your own presentations. And that is, I want to add a little bit of media. And in this case, I simply want to plug in a YouTube video. I think it's a nice little element that you can add in, just like you probably would with a lot of your PowerPoints. But before we do that, I want to quickly add in a frame. And I want to add in a circle in this case, just to try and keep consistent with the little circle themes that we have. Try and get as close as I can to replicating the other circles. <laughs> and so once I have my circle in place, then I'm going to simply click on Media. And we're going to pull in something from YouTube. And this is very easy to do. We simply find a video that we like, and then we copy and paste the address into here and then just click insert. As you can see it comes up quite quickly and then we can just drag it over. Now of course this is a little bigger than we want so we're gonna shrink this down just a tad. And then when we pull this up in our presentation, center it a little more, uh, we'll have the option to simply click play when we do this. And this is basically it. This covers everything that we want to see here. And now that we have all of our pieces in place, let's go ahead and take a look and see what what our presentation looks like. And to do that we're going to work our way over to this present button here. So you'll notice at the bottom you have these uh, left and right arrow keys but just like a PowerPoint you can also use your left and right cursor keys uh, that are on pretty much every keyboard as well. So we simply just want to click through and it'll back up and show us our entire view and then it'll work through the path that we created. So as you can see here it's going exactly in order and we can go as fast or as slow as we want and you'll see as you put these together that you have a choice of setting it up where you're kind of talking at the same time that you're presenting things or you can keep your presence as something that's meant to be completely online where you have a full script put in there and it does all the talking for you and that way if you email this to students, uh, everything is self-explanatory. And then of course when you get to the video section, you see that if you click on this. Hi, I'm Kimberly William. And don't worry, I won't make you listen to the whole thing again. <laughs> but there you go, and then you have your whole presentation. So the last thing that we want to look at is how to share this. So we simply use the escape key to get out of the preview mode. And then what I like to do is just head on over to this little button here, which is to save and close this Prezi. Because when you do that, it takes you back to your home page, which looks a little something like this. So you can see some bits of information down here. You can play your Prezi, of course. You can go back in and edit it. Uh, you can view together if you would like to collaborate and work with colleagues or if you want to set this up for a student project where they work together. You can download this so you can save this on your desktop. You can save a copy or this is very important here, share. And this is where you get the uh, web address that you can email out to say students or parents or colleagues or whoever you like. And they even have a, a neat little email feature here where you can go ahead and type in an email address and add a personal note and it will send this out to you. This is also important if you guys are maintaining any type of school website if, if say you you know your school gives you a, a home page for your class you can also embed this and it will allow you to copy the code to a clipboard put it into your page and then your viewers can as it says here pan and zoom freely as well and so all of these kind of help uh, uh, others and and make your Prezi accessible one last thing to show you while we're in this section is allow copy and what this means is that not only is it public, but that you allow other people to copy yours. Now, of course, you can just keep it public so people can explore and find it. Private, uh, you will need to probably upgrade to 
uh, one of the, the different accounts before you can do that. But a lot of teachers are really good about sharing. And I certainly encourage you to keep an eye out for Prezi's that other teachers have put on here and posted. And you can find their presentations under Explore. And so if you scroll down here and go to Education, you'll see different ones that teachers have put together. This is a great one to look at. And what I encourage you to do is, is to look for this word right here, reusable. So if you click on this presentation and say you happen to be a music teacher and you, you really like this, you, you'll notice here it says editor license for educational use. And it will actually allow you to make a copy. And so therefore, instead of trying to create something really difficult or really unique on your own, if you want to work outside of the templates they already provide, then you do have this option of going out there and finding great material that other teachers are offering. And of course, I hope you come up with your own great unique content that you will share with other teachers as well. And so that covers pretty much the basics of Prezi. Uh, you will find different uh, nuances or tricks or some other little things uh, with colors and themes that, that you can continue to play with to make it truly your own. However, I suggest that you simply work through some of the steps that we just did here first and really take some time to get comfortable with the, the process and develop very simple, kind of clean Prezi presentations before you begin to to play with different complexities or add layers to your presentations and I know that uh, it will go a long way to impressing your students and, and impressing your peers. Good luck.